us. She called the doctor, <laughs> woke him up, and said, doctor. <laughs> Welcome back. Cindy Dole here. This is Home Wizards, where we love talking about things just to make you feel better at home. Whether you live in an apartment or a condo or a house, uh, it's all good. And I hope you're enjoying the show so far. Uh, the number is 888-539-2980. And by the way, make sure you go and follow me on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash follow Cindy. And I can't wait for you to see the pictures of our monarch butterfly in the making. It's the cutest darn thing. It's like we have a pet. Uh, we already have dogs, but it's so much fun now to see uh, this little caterpillar that's becoming... Um, it's in its cocoon. It's it, you literally th- in through the cocoon. You can see the wings forming, and it's in this bright green little chrysalis. And you, you got to go see it. It's just amazing. So, but speaking of green lime in the coconut, it's time to talk about citrus because we love citrus here in Southern California. We love it just being in California. I mean, weren't you raised on citrus? I was. I remember when I uh, had a job in Michigan. My dad would uh, ship me. Um, a box of oranges from our home tree. It probably wasn't even a legal thing to do. I don't know, but he did it. <laughs> so I was able to have uh, fresh home squeezed uh, orange juice while I was in Michigan. But anyway, there's a there's a real pest that's going out there, and we've been monitoring it and tracking it, and so I thought we would see the very latest of what's happening with what's known as the Asian citrus psyllid. It's this really nasty little aphid-like bugger that can carry a very devastating disease that um, has really been a, a troublesome thing for folks in Florida, and we're trying to get an edge on it. So with me is Ted Batkin. He is the head of the California Citrus Research Board. So, hey, Ted, great to have you here. Oh, it's great to be here, Cindy, and I love that music. Thank you. Well, we love our citrus, and we love to find music that kind of fits it. And and tell us, uh, tell us all about how you basically have been raised on citrus. Well, I uh, grew up out here. I'm a, a fourth-generation farmer, and uh, we've raised citrus since, uh, oh, you know, the late 18, uh, 1890, 1888 here in uh, San Joaquin Valley of California. So uh, it's kind of a part of me and in my blood. Yeah, isn't that great? So your blood is orange, or maybe it's lime. You never know, right? <laughs> oh, it comes out multicolored. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so tell us, every, you know, the, this Asian citrus psyllid, we've, wa- we've been watching this for the past year or so. Um, how bad is it right now? The the pest kind of came into California, kind of snuck across the border in uh, 2008, and came into San Diego County, uh, worked its way up into central uh, California, into Los Angeles area, primarily in the Los Angeles basin. But we've been picking it up uh, as far into the east, into the Inland Empire, and then out into uh, the San Diego, or excuse me, um, San Bernardino and Redlands area. But just small amounts of them in the uh, Inland Empire. The major infestation of this bug, though, is in the central Los Angeles basin, um, just kind of south of the center of the city of Los Angeles, down into, uh, into Norwalk, into um, Mil- um, uh, Maywood, just a whole bunch of little communities down there have pretty good-sized populations of it. But we've been treating it. Uh, for the last couple of years, and especially this past year. And it seems to be that the treatments are working very well. Well, so when you say a major infestation, I mean, it isn't like we're walking into a swarm of bees. How do you how do you know that there's an infestation? I mean, and I know when you guys have been by, because you see those little, they're made out of paper, it looks like a little triangular thing hanging from a citrus tree saying, this guy's been monitored. Yeah, we have several kinds of traps that go into citrus trees here in California, and that little white triangle trap that uh, that you've described is a uh, actually a fruit fly trap. That's where we're looking for the you know the infamous med fly of the uh, of years past. Oh, so that's not for the Asian citrus psyllid. No, actually, oh. the Asian citrus psyllid trap is a big yellow panel trap. It's okay. about five inches wide and about eight, eight inches high. Okay, so that is one sign that you guys have been in the area and you're monitoring. But for the rest of us, just kind of walking around in our neighborhood, we're walking the dogs. How do we know that there's an infestation of the Asian citrus psyllid or not? Well, if the uh, pest is active in the tree, and now's the time of year that we start seeing it become even more active, is on the tips of the branches where the new leaves are starting to push out. They kind of sprout out, and they look this little feathery kind of new leaves on the tip. That's where the psyllid lays its eggs. The female likes that part of the tree because it's tender and tasty, and they can feed on it. So they lay their eggs right along that kind of feathery growth that's on the new end. When the eggs hatch out, the nymphs give off a kind of a white little substance. Uh, We kind of call it frass is one of the names that... uh, 
that, that we have for it. And it, it looks kind of like little bits of cotton, strips of cotton kind of bunched together, and mm. it's a little bit gooey. Uh, oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you've had <laughs> some go, fun. <laughs> I wouldn't go rubbing your fingers in it. It's probably not a good uh, 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 lotion for you, mm. but... Uh, uh, but you can see it. It's, it. It looks white, and it, uh, it, it's pretty easy to see from the, uh, you know, with the with the eye without a magnifying mm-hmm. glass. Okay. So if we have citrus trees on our property, or if we have citrus trees in containers on our balcony, or whatever, um, we just need to pay attention and kind of inspect that area. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. Uh, kind of check your trees. Well, once a week, once every other week or so, and uh, look at them. And if you see that little white stuff forming. Uh, then we would uh, ask people to contact uh, the California Department of Food and Agriculture. We have an 800 800 number for that. Uh, But it's really important that we find this pest early before large populations, I mean massive populations build up, uh, where then it gets out of control. Mm -hmm. But right now the populations are at a stage that we believe we can't actually control them and reduce the population so we can eliminate the threat of the bacteria that will kill the tree. Yeah, that's because real problem. and luckily we haven't seen that happen, right? We haven't that's, seen the bacteria. That's correct. We do not have the bacteria in California that we know of. And it's very critical to say that because this bacteria can come in to the state without us knowing about it, which has been the case everywhere else in the world that this little pest is gone. Uh, it's kind of like Mary's little lamb, that wherever the pest goes, the bacteria follows it. And so we're pretty certain that somewhere in California, and probably in Southern California because of the climate, this bacteria exists. Hmm. And so we don't want that psyllid finding the tree that has that bacteria and then spreading it to the rest of the trees in Southern California. And then what's the worst case scenario if the bacteria were to show up? I mean, then we just lose like Florida. I mean, you lose a lot of crops, right? Yes. Then, then it, it gets ugly uh, because that bacteria ultimately will kill the tree. So if, uh, if in your backyard the psyllid picks up the bacteria and, and uh, feeds on your tree, that tree will die. There's no, you can't stop it. You can't save it at that point. Once the bacteria has arrived, right. Once the bacteria has arrived and gets into the tree, wow. The tree's toast. Oh, that's tragic. It it is tragic. And where this has been in other parts, like we say in Florida, they're losing trees at an alarming rate. Uh, so far, they've lost and had to replace over a hundred and fifty thousand acres, hmm. and that equates out to probably somewhere around two to three million trees. So it sounds like this is helping the California citrus industry then. No, I can't say that it does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and, and here's the thing why. Uh, the Florida industry is a juice industry. Ninety percent of their crop goes into juice concentrate. And so Minute Maid and Tropicana and all these people that uh, put out you know, little frozen uh, cans of frozen orange juice, the majority of that comes from Florida. Mm. Our California citrus industry is a fresh table crop. We grow beautiful fruit, very good flavor, and it goes into the fresh market, so you buy it in the grocery store. So we're really not direct competitors. In fact, we cooperate a great deal with Florida and Texas. Mm-hmm. You guys are so friendly, you citrus people. You know, well, we really are. Actually, and, you know, and it's not—it's not just a, a joke. We, I know. we really are. That's nice. That's good. That's good. It's—it's it's a friendly. We can all get along, kind of a thing. That's yeah. great. Yeah, we don't sing kumbaya, but we all do get along. Okay. All right. Well, we want our California citrus industry to do well. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm, forgive me if I'm getting a little competitive. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, we we do want to keep our industry here alive. Yes. Uh, it is a major contributor to the California economy. Yeah. Uh, we contribute about $1.8 billion in just farm gate value. And then when you put in the multiplier of jobs in California, such as the trucking industry and the shipping industry and the retail industry, all the various different jobs that are created that are multipliers of that, Mm -hmm. uh, the 
total value to the California economy is somewhere in the huge. neighborhood of four billion dollars. Huge, huge. Yeah. All right. Well, don't go away. We have more questions for you. We're going to ta- find out a little bit how you do treat uh, for this Asian citrus psyllid and and more things that, that you can do as a citrus grower here in Southern California. And we're going to learn about some of the new varieties and things you can try uh, in the garden. Home Wizard Cindy Dole. The fun continues right after this. And keep the number handy. It's eight 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 five three nine two nine eighty. We're back after this. I know that sounds like a commercial for that certain, you know, furniture polish, but that's the real song. Cindy Dole here, Home Wizards, and we're talking about citrus because, well, we love it here in Southern California. And uh, we want to be sure that if you do have citrus trees in your yard, in your front yard, in your backyard, and in containers, that you are uh, mindful of this terrible bug known as the Asian citrus psyllid. It just has an ugly name, you know, and it's not a happy guy. Ted Batkin is uh, the president of the California Citrus Research Board who's helping us uh, be a little smarter about this. So thanks, Ted. I was listening to Peter, Paul, and Mary there thinking about <laughs> the wonderful lemons that we have. And yeah. we actually have some really good-tasting lemons that you can eat. Good. Well, I want to get to that. But first, before we talk about all the great fruits, tell me how, you tr- how you've how you been treating the Asian citrus psyllid. I mean, because we're going to keep an eye out for that little white goo that you speak of that might be appearing on our tree. And by the way, tell us, too, what is the 800 number? If we do see this, we yeah. want to contact uh, the California Department of Agriculture. What is that number? It's 800. Uh-huh. Four nine one one eight nine nine. 800-491-1899, okay? That's correct. And we can call any time, any day, if we think we see some of these the signs of that white goo that you speak of. Yes, you'll go through, it's a kind of an automated number, and you'll go through and end, end up with a person, and uh, they will uh, send somebody out to your property uh, when they can, and they'll look at the tree to confirm that it is, in fact, the Asian citrus psyllid. And then if it is, or through other, any of the other trapping programs, if the state visits and said we we need to treat, uh, they it's a free treatment. The state will actually treat your trees. So um, that's it, nice. It, yeah, we like uh, that. <laughs> well, it uh, it's there's very little in life that's free, but this is one that is. Um, what it, what does the treatment entail? What it, happens? It's, it's, there's two things that uh, that the uh, program treats with. One is a soil drench, uh, which is a uh, and a systemic that goes into the tree, and then that protects the tree for uh, anywhere from six to nine months. Then they also put a, a cover spray on the tree to get any adults that uh, would be there at the time of the spray. And they use a pyrethrin, which is a very mild uh, uh, insecticide. It's non-toxic to humans mm-hmm. or to animals, and so there's no risk of your dogs or your kids getting any problems with it. It's strictly an insect growth regulator. So both the soil drench, which we've heard so much about, and how that whole systemic process in terms of whether it's for agriculture, treating uh, the food and the fruits that we eat, or in our own home gardens, how by the time that the fruit or the vegetable has has uh, fruited, um, it's safe to eat. That's correct. The, uh, these these uh, uh, compounds don't transfer from the tree into the fruit. That's amazing. It just kind of does, it just does what it's supposed to do. Yes, it just kind of stays in the foliage and is there when the uh, when the nymphs or the uh, adults feed on the plant. Mm-hmm. And so it will it will stop the nymph, <laughs> the nymph yep. um, from from further doing its thing, and it also will um, prevent you know future nymphs. That's correct. And and save our citrus. Great. Okay, so we just need to be very uh, very much the boy and girl scouts and keep our eyes. Um, open for this is what you're saying. Yes, and there, there's kind of one other thing too that we, you know, we encourage homeowners to plant trees. I mean, we think that that's one of the best things for everybody. The more trees that are out there, but when they do, please get their trees from a local nursery that is certified and that the tree has a little blue tag on it. Hmm. In other words, you know, don't run it down across the border into Mexico and mm-hmm. buy a tree and throw it in your trunk or uh, go get a tree somewhere from an area that has the psyllid, because that's the main way this thing gets moved around the state. Well, hang on a second. Speaking of putting a tree in your trunk, I mean, they'd stop you if you did that, right? I mean, you can't get a tree in your trunk. If they catch you. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. But unfortunately, you know, there are people that tend to... Smuggle trees. I would... You said it. Thank you. 
<laughs> wow. And uh, and so if you buy a tree, just make sure you buy it from a nursery that's certified. And that includes the big box stores. It includes everybody, right? Everybody. Okay. Yeah, any, any commercial nursery in Southern California okay. is carrying registered trees. And it has a blue label on it. It has a little blue tag on it. I didn't know. I have to watch for the blue label. <laughs> okay. As opposed to the blue light special. We got the blue label. Yep. All right. Well, so now <laughs> let's segue to some of the things as we you got us and you got me shopping because I love to shop for plants. Um, what should we be looking for that's new? And, and you told me we were talking on the phone that there's no such thing as a tangerine. Boy, tell me why I was stupid on that one. Well, it's uh, it tangerine was a name that was kind of concocted uh, probably back in the 40s by the retailers because there was a uh, a tangor or uh, you know, and some some varieties that that they loosely call tangerines, but the classification of all of those fruits is actually mandarin, and uh, and so tangerine is just kind of a, a num- name. Made a wonderful jazz tune back in the forties, but uh, uh, but it's really not the the botanical name or the official name of that class of fruit. Mm-hmm. Mandarins is the class. Okay. What are some of the the varieties that we should be thinking of and trying right now? Well, there's lots of new varieties that are coming into the marketplace. And recently, uh, the University of California at Riverside released a uh, mandarin called Tango. And Tango is a wonderful piece of fruit. It just eats like a dream, and it's a very prolific producer. And it will produce a crop every year. It doesn't tend to get into the alternate bearing that some uh, mandarins class and some oranges do. That's good to know. I mean, does, does it do well in a container? No, citrus no. does well in a container. No, don't tell me that. Because, <laughs> well, hang on now. Because we love having limes, and uh, we just th- we didn't have enough space, so we put them in containers. Come yeah, on. if you have a big container. Yeah, you know, we have a big that, one. Yeah, that allows for good root growth and root, good root health, yeah. you know, Certain varieties will survive in containers. Kumquats do pretty well. Some of the limes do pretty well. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to plant a lemon or an orange or a mandarin, that thing really needs to have a a in-the-ground root zone. Because what happens is after about eight to ten years, those roots start wrapping around each other, Mm -hmm. and they girdle each other, and they choke the plant. Oh, gosh. That sounds that's almost as bad as the Asian citrus salad. (laughs) Yeah, just about the same thing. (laughs) Oh, my. And kumquats, we can grow those in a container inside our house. Yes, you can. I love that look. Oh, they're wonderful, and I I take take mine, and I cut them up and put them in my stir fries. Mm -hmm. Or in a salad? Yep. Look at you eating all that citrus. All that vitamin C. <laughs> uh, <it's great. laughs> you never get sick, right? Never do. <laughs> what about watering our citrus? Um, you know, it's always one of those things, especially in this hot weather. You feel like you need to water them more. But I mean, come on, these are uh, these are trees that are used to being in desert climates. That's correct. And the probably the worst thing you can do to a citrus tree is short water it frequently. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you really need to do is drive that water deep because you want those roots to go down deep into the soils and and that makes them more drought, drought tolerant. Yeah. So feed the plants well. Don't underwater them, but water them for long periods of time, but not so often. Uh, we in, in the commercial growers, we, we tend to grow, uh, to water our trees about every five to seven days. Okay, that's a good rule. And I love those tree um, soakers. They're perfect. You know, the, it's a, it's basically a hose that has little, like, toothpick size holes all up and down and just wrap it around and let it just sit there for a while. Yeah, do that. If you soak a tree, especially in the Southern California climate down mm-hmm. there, if you soak that tree once a week uh, and, and drive that water deep, that tree will just be as happy as can be. And how often should we get rid of the old fruit? If we if we have a tree that's, that's really old, it's, you can't get to it, just try to get it off every year? You want to get it off really because that old fruit will attract uh, pathogens and uh, diseases. Okay. And, and so, uh, you know, there's molds and things of that nature that accumulate on that old fruit, and you really don't want that spreading throughout the tree. Thank you, Ted Batkin. Uh, and we want to tell everybody again the phone number. If you do spot what seems to be a suspicious Asian citrus psyllid, it's 800-491-1899. Thank you, my friend. We'll talk to you again soon. Look forward to it. All right. Uh, hey, the fun continues next Saturday. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, next time, we're going to talk with a landscape designer to help us with what you see first when you go home, right? That driveway, that front entry. How can you make it look cool and inviting and on a budget, okay? Check out the website, cindydole.com. 
Facebook.com. Download the free app. Listen to the past shows. Follow me on Facebook. And most importantly, have a good weekend. Until next time, remember, the key's under the mat. Bye-bye.